Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. What in the roads? Man, you think after this many days in California, the desert safari would be over. But it is not. Don't worry, I'm going to get back to the coast eventually. I'm kind of having fun looking around out here. This actually isn't that unusual out this way. Everywhere you turn in Riverside County, you'll see stuff like this. It's just how it is. A bunch of redneck Americans in these parts. We're on the outskirts of Desert Hot Springs, a smallish city of 32,000 people just outside of Palm Springs. I'm here because this place is no joke, mister. Where we are now is right smack dab in the middle of the biggest drug center in the nation. That's right. Today, Riverside County is numero uno for drugs. For California, that's like alpha male status. So if you Google drug problems in Riverside County, you'll see all kinds of stuff about how bad the problem is out here. The only reason I even made the detour up here from Palm Springs was because I kept hearing from people telling me I needed to pop by. Haven't you heard, they say? Everybody here is strung out. There's meth labs everywhere. There's drug houses all over, Nick. Man, you people really keep pushing my limits, don't you? Where we are is in the Palm Springs metro. Most of what's out here are small cities of 20,000 people kind of scattered throughout the desert. Everything out here is agricultural wasteland. Here's Palm Springs right there. But there's this sweet spot in north central Riverside County with the species unlike any other in the state. This is the main drag in downtown Desert Hot Springs. It really isn't much to look at. You don't see dangerous people driving around. There's homeless people straggling around and some local tweakers, but it's not scary here, at least on the surface. I've always kind of liked it up here. I've had family that lived in the area a few times. The Mexican food is amazing. But man, the news reports are fierce. One quick Google search and the first thing I saw about Riverside County is a government report that calls this the meth capital of the United States. <laughs> okay, I guess I don't have to Google anymore. But it's fair to say I'm in the right place. The whole area up here has a reputation for meth head junkies, crackheads, addicts, transients, and thieves. The local news just said, throw a rock in any direction and you'll hit a meth dealer. <laughs> what the hell? The report goes on and on about how bad things are here for drug use and production of drugs. There's a whole section on all the super meth labs that crank out 10 pounds of dope at a time. So I guess driving around, you never know when something's going to blow up. Jesus. According to this chart, you can get 15,000 a pound for the stuff in LA and they can crank out a batch in two days. I just learned there's this thing called dirt labs where they sweep up the ground in the super labs and get all the spilled drugs off the ground and cook it. <laughs> That's desperate. But drugs are bad, kids. Very, very bad. Now I don't live on this street, and I don't know what it's like to live near addicts and dealers, but it sounds like a bummer. Real pretty views in the mountains, though, I have to say. Clearly, these people don't want to socialize. But I'd imagine some of them off-road their vehicles. That sounds like fun. A lot of Riverside County is either Hispanic or white. It's 45% Hispanic and 40% white in this county. According to the report I talked about, a lot of the super labs out here are run by Mexican drug trafficking organizations. Is that what a cartel is? 
But today, they aren't making drugs here as much as they are smuggling them. It's more likely to find a house with a trash bag full of Mexican crank than it would be to find some Yahoo cooking in a shed. The U.S. has made it a lot harder for crackheads to get the chemicals they need to make drugs at home. But in Mexico, they can get the chemicals really easily. A recent report called Riverside County the Drug Distribution Center of the U.S. It says that a quarter of all meth seized in this county came from this area alone. The DEA guy in Riverside County said this is basically the Costco warehouse of drug dealers. My God. Just last year, they made a bust near here where a truck had 2,600 pounds of coke, 66 pounds of heroin, and 19 tons of weed. But people want to keep the borders open, right? And apparently, this is crazy. Riverside County is the most wiretapped place in America. Man, they are doing a lot to try to squash all of this. God, I guess looking back, I should be glad I didn't get rolled driving around with the damn camera out the window, or at least pulled over. It makes sense that this region would be so bad for drugs. It's isolated, cheap, and right off the 10 freeway. And it's close to Mexico. You can just blend in up here. According to the report, women are more likely to use meth than men. Huh. Interesting, Nappy. I wonder why that is. This says that women get hooked easier, but women get used to it, so they have to take more. Well, I don't know anything about that. I've never tried drugs before. Do you think it would be easy for me to tell if somebody I knew was on them? Probably. This is also a huge problem in the Morongo Valley, which is just over the hill from where we are now. From what I hear, a lot of the drugs have been pushed up into San Bernardino County. It's also bad in other smallish communities outside of Palm Springs, places like Sky Valley. Read the local news anywhere in this desert area, and it's all about people strung out or breaking the law. They're trying to get this under control. There's agencies here that are trying to steer people into rehab. I also hear that courts are trading jail time for rehab. And there's some nonprofits out here that'll come up to you and try to get you to check into rehab. I guess at the farmer's markets, they can tell who's on meth and who isn't. Honestly, it's not that hard to spot. But it's going to take a lot of motivated, caring people to turn this disaster in the other direction. The drug abuse out here is all very sad. It rips families apart, and it can just be heartbreaking to watch. Most of Riverside County is just folks who want to live cheap and do their own thing. The air's clean, and they won't hear ambulances all night long. You could get lost out here. Actually, I think that's the whole point. It's not all Tweakerville here. There's some really nice areas in this part of the county. This neighborhood we're in is only 10 minutes away from where we were earlier. These people look like they have normal, somewhat successful lives. In case you're curious, homes on this street are in the $900,000 range. And from atop this hill, they can look down upon the valley floor. You can almost see the meth clouds on the horizon. Is it bad here? Yes, to me, it looks like a normal desert community. And I think that's why the bad guys are so successful here. Now, I wanted to talk to somebody who has insight into the amount of drug use up here. I found somebody who talked to me about how bad the drugs are in this part of Riverside County, but he had a lot of other interesting things to talk about, too. You, you live in an area of Riverside County that, that has really bad drug use, and you brought to my attention another, another problem. But briefly, I wanted to ask you, how bad is the drugs out there in your part of Riverside County? Well, they say there's about 1,200 gangs from here to L.A. to San Diego, so this is like a triangle. And Coachella Valley, is there's a lot of problem with crystal meth. And uh, I, 
as an Uber driver, I just try to avoid these people. But it's very rampant here. But because it's spread out, it's not so noticeable like in a big city, like in Skid Row or something. Here it's very spread out. So, But uh, in Coachella, Desert Hot Springs, can be some very dangerous towns to be walking around at nighttime. Yeah, and I hear it's getting worse with the, uh, they're, they're not only manufacturing drugs, but they're using it, uh, you're part of the county to distribute uh, all the drugs no. coming from Mexico. Uh, it's true. I'm totally against meth. I've lost a lot of my friends with it. Uh, the truth is, there's very few people I even trust in my home down here because so many people seem to have a story. And uh, I had to come back to America because of COVID. I was a very successful entertainer. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I we'll didn't want to we'll move to a city, so I took the desert. And uh, yeah, there's a lot going on here, but uh, it seems like everyone knows each other. So it's not so easy to pull off a crime like in a big city. The police already know everybody here. But yeah, there is a lot of traders going up in fires because they're trying to have meth labs and stuff like that. Uh, but my concern right now is to get out a message about the environment here. It's in more trouble than anybody seems to realize. Yeah, you sent me some footage. You, you live out there. You're out there all the time, walking around, driving around, and and there's trash everywhere out in that part of the valley. Plastic, paper, tr furniture, styrofoam. It's really bad out there. Is it to the point that you think it's going to harm the environment? Yeah, it's past that. In my view, it's a state of emergency. Uh, the other day I saw a coyote walk running across the street with a tin can in his hand. And that really, uh, really got me thinking about it. And because I walk every morning through the trails around Palm Springs, I see what's behind the city. And every single plant or brush or grub is filled with plastic under it. There's not a single plant out there without plastic under it, not even one. It is such a situation I, I don't even know how to explain it, but I showed you some videos, so maybe you Nick, could help me get the message out to the people. What are they doing to clean up the desert, man? I've seen the video, it looks like shit. Nothing, and a lot of those aluminum cans out there are rusted like from 10 years ago. Nobody has ever picked up out there. Uh, there is millions of tons of plastic and trash out there. It's, it, it's not just one place. All of Coachella Valley is surrounded by plastic. It gets very windy, so it blows. And uh, so one day it doesn't look like it's, it looks clean. The next day it's covered with plastic. It's like magic how a tree can be covered in plastic. The wildlife is also suffocating from this. And uh, there's just not one corporation or politician or anybody down here talking about it. It's, it's all, they make sure the cities of, I'm in La Quinta right now, one of the most nicest suburbs in the United States. So right across the street from me is the P, the Indian Wells Tennis Tournament. And behind me is the PGA Golf. And now you go five miles south towards Coachella, there it begins garbage lined up on every street, every desert pocket, and a lot of illegal dumping. Uh, I Very rarely do I see a sign that says it's illegal to dump. There, there's very few fines that say littering is illegal. Uh, there's just simply no real enforcement here at all about this situation. And when you go to North Palm Springs, like some of the videos I showed you, a lot of people who are, are dumping their garbage out there, just right in the desert. And nobody says anything about it, and nobody wants to talk about it. And I just wanted to let you know, because it seems like you are a person who's interested in our environment, and I thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do care about uh, the environment. Um, what What is it that you think that they can do? Can they... 
physically comb all of those square miles and pick up all the little pieces of trash? I mean, is it even possible? Well, I would first bring in the National Guard. They would need about two months to even put a dent in this. They would need thousands of people to, to clean this up. And then the politicians are going to have to regulate these corporations. They can no longer give out plastic cups, straws, and stirs to, to every person so easily. Uh, there has to be some kind of fast food tax, litter tax, something to stop people from this. Uh, I use my same cup every time, or I drink out of a porcelain cup. I, I don't use garbage myself unless it's an emergency. And a lot of people here, corporations, you walk in any supermarket and there's someone there giving you a plastic bag before you can say yes or no. Uh, uh, in Europe, everyone carries their own bags into the supermarkets. They have dumpsters in front of the supermarkets to get rid of all the extra packing so you don't have to take it home. Uh, here, corporations have to be regulated very strictly, and also uh, our schools need to teach our children about the environment and what plastic does and what it's doing to our country. Uh, I'm afraid in the next couple years, we're not gonna have any wildlife. It's that serious. I'm, I'm walking four miles a day through the desert, and when it's windy, I get hit in the head by paper, by plastic cups, and all of them seem to be the same. McDonald's, Arco, Pilot Truck Stop, Coca-Cola, 7-Eleven, Wendy's, Jack in a Box. It's their garbage out there in the desert, and all they do is keep their lot clean, but they don't, they don't care about outside of the lot. They don't, there's no funding to clean up these areas. And somehow you can't blame them because not, it's not all their garbage. But still, they don't need to be selling this to people. And people could start using their own cups and less plastic. And plastic bags should be illegal like in Europe. Well, I, I hope that this draws awareness to it. And you get some people that are motivated to go out and, and, and try to find a solution to it. Because that's a really pretty desert. There's wildlife everywhere. It's one of the last places in California that's not ruined. Um, yes. But man, uh, they they need to figure that out because um, that's yeah. That's and what's sad is Nick is nobody's talking about it. So if you have garbage and you don't want to pay to dump it, you can just dump it out here for free. There's nobody going to enforce any laws. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.